Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'du Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Hayyakum Allah Jami'in May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas with thabat Ala sunnah And I was looking for a place to read and study and I found a new wonderful place and I decided to open a fantastic book in Creed the book of Imam Imam Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah Fi Waqtiha or Fi, fi Asrihi Imam Abu Muhammad Al Hassan Ibn Ali Bin Khalf Al Babahari Rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasi'ah. And he died 329 Hijri. And he said something that was so beneficial because, and so in line with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, just the importance of nasiha, the importance of advising one another uh, based on Islamic principles and with an Islamic maqsad, you know, with sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, a deen a nasiha. A deen a nasiha, a deen a nasiha. And he was asked, Liman, Lillahi, Wili Kitabihi, Wili Rasulihi, Wili A'immatul Muslimin wa Ammatihim. So the Prophet وسلم, was asked about, uh, or, or he said that the religion is sin sincere advice. And then he was asked, uh, to whom? And of course, this was from the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, and Ijma'in. And he said, uh, you know, for Allah, or sincerity to Allah, and to his book, to his messenger, to the leader of the Muslims, and the common folk. So that is an important part of our religions, that we advise one another on khayyam, not on sharq. So I literally came here to review as I'm beginning to uh, prepare for the next group of lessons for Al Athari Institute, which will be more than likely Shara Sunnah Imam Barbahari. And so I was coming to prepare and I opened the book up. I was reading some of the introduction and I came across, across this very munasib quote Abu Abdullah ibn Batta. He said, I heard Abu Muhammad al-Babahari say, so he heard Imam Babahari say this, sitting in order to advise sincerely is to open the door of benefit and sitting in order to debate is to close the doors of benefit. Subhanallah. Look at the wisdom of our Salaf as Salih, Ridwan Allahi alayhim, beginning with the Sahabat al Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Radiallahu Ta'ala Mijma'in. In that, of course, that's Muwafaka. So when we look at the Athar of the, the Salaf, we have to make sure that it's Muwafaka with the Sunnah of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and, and the Book of Allah, Azza wa Jal. And Nasiha. Is what we're commanded to do as the Prophet وسلم, said. And said that the, the deen is uh, a deen of nasiha. You know, this religion is sincere advice. Because by teaching the religion and sharing knowledge of the deen and correcting one another and helping one another to be better and calling to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is actualizing that nasiha. This is actually implementing and practicing that advice that our Prophet ﷺ uh, commanded us to implement. And that is a part of calling to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah wasallam. And I've said it so many times, and I'm going to say it again, as our Shaykh Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i, he mentioned... <coughs> when he was talking about da'wah, da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, more specifically, because there's da'wah to Ahl Bid'ah and then there's da'wah to Ahl Sunnah. 
And of course, then there's Dawah to Ahl Kufr. That's something different. But he said, Dawah to Ahl Sunnah, Dawah to Min Kitabi La Ila Kitabi La, Wa Min Sunnati Rasuli Lahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam, Ila Sunnati Rasuli Lahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam. He said, The Dawah of Ahl Sunnah is the Dawah from the Book of Allah to the Book of Allah, from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam, to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam. So that really sums up in essence that the Dawah of Ahl Sunnah is a Dawah not calling to ourselves, not calling to our clique, not calling to our crew, not calling to our friends, but calling to the book and the Sunnah. And that requires that sincerity that we mentioned. Because in order to have any deeds accepted, whether that's Nasiha, whether that's your Salat, whether that's your Zakat, you need uh, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it has to be in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So getting back to the advice of Imam Baba Hari, Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatin wasiya, he, he mentioned that since uh, that, uh, you know, giving advice, sincere advice, is benefit. Think about that. Limadha, why? Because sincere advice, ahabati fillah, is also a part of, as we see, uh, commanding the good and forbidding the evil. That's included in that hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, in which he said, مَنْ رَاءَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْقَرٍ فَلْيُغَيْرُهُ بِيَدْ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَتِيعْ فَبِاللَّسَانِهِ فَإِمْ لَمْ يَسْتَتِيعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ عَرَفُ الْإِمَانُ رَوَاهُ مُسْلَمْ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that whoever sees a good, then change it with his hand. If he's unable to do so, then change it with his tongue, meaning speak out against it. If he's unable to do that, then change it with his heart. And that's the weakest form of faith. So if commanding the good and forbidding the evil is a part of uh, Iman, likewise, Nasiha is a part of Iman. It's a part of faith. Because Nasiha is a part of, that's one, perhaps one martaba. That's one level from amongst the levels of commanding the good and forbidding the evil. Because how else do you give when you speak with the tongue and you're advising someone? I mean, advice is, is with the tongue. It's not usually with the hands. It's not usually, uh, you know, your, your advice uh, is usually something which is, is, is done orally, that you are speaking to someone. You're communicating something. You are advising your brother, advising your sister, advising someone uh, to good. Even when you're calling non-Muslims to good, this is a part of commanding the good and forbidding the evil, and this is a part of da'wah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is a part of deen and nasiha. Because you're calling to the book and the sunya, you're calling them from darkness to light. So we see, as we just gave many examples, that as Imam Baba Hadi is stating, there's so much benefit in nasiha. Then he gave another very, he mentioned another very important point, which is also a min asul ittiqada ahl sunnah, or min haja ahl sunnah, is that ahl sunnah avoids debates mostly. Now, that's muqayyid as well. That there are many exceptions which were allowable. But let's talk about why this is the asl is not to debate and argue. And that's why he said to argue is no benefit. Because when you, the mufasid of getting into argumentation, first and foremost, we know it creates enmity, hatred between people. And that is not permissible between the, the believers. Secondly, as Ahlul Sunnah, as we see in the books like we'll, we'll come to in, in, in this text, as well as many other texts like Imam al Tahawi, Shara uh, Sunnah, Imam al Muzni, and so many books of, of, of the Salaf and the later generations, that it was codified, that it was mentioned in their books. Because that became a foundation principle of Ahl Sunnah because Ahl Bid'ah wanted to debate. Ahl Bid'ah took their, uh, made taqdima of their aql over the knuckle. They made 
gave preference to their intellectual reasoning and discourse and debating. We know the foundation of philosophy is you're into debates. You know, that's what we understand. How many, you know, schools still today, universities, look at the Oxford debates, all of these things, they'll take a point and then they'll go on the different sides of the coin and present different perspectives and argue, uh, you know, trying to see who's the best debater, who comes up with the best uh, point of contention and whose hypothesis is, is best. So it's all based on reasoning and it's based on persuasion. And so this is what we found in the, uh, in the time of the Salaf is that a lot of the people of desires, especially, especially Ahle Kalam, that they wanted to debate and to debate and argue. But their base point is not returning to the book and the sunnah. In fact, a lot of times it was outside of the book and the sunnah. It was in accordance with their reason. Or they might even be challenging points of the book and points of the sunnah. Or debating, in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine sifat aslan. You know, so they were arguing against the kitab and arguing against the sunnah. Thinking that, you know, perhaps we can reassess these usul of Ahl sunnah these foundation principles, or worse than that, we can reassess the validity of the Book of Allah and the validity of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu or points of it, or our understanding of it. So Ahl sunnah cut that door for several reasons. So it's not to give Ahl bidah a platform. That's one of the reasons why uh, generally Ahl sunnah doesn't debate with Ahl bidah Because if you, you, for one, you're inviting them to have a platform to speak. Secondly, if there's an audience, and especially in this, <coughs> in this day and age, there's a, more often than not, there's a video audience or what have you, or it's on audio, in that you are allowing that bid'ah to be spread, meaning other people, the, the weak and general Muslims can easily be persuaded by whoever has either the nicest argument, whoever's more charismatic, whoever presents more points, even if the points aren't from the book and the sunnah. Instead, they could be points of, of men and, and philosophies and ideologies and so forth, and they list a thousand of them. And Ahl sunnah lists a few uh, statements of Allah and the statements of the sunnah of the message of Allah. So it shows that the point of reference for both groups is different. Ahl sunnah refers back to the book and the sunnah and the understanding of the salaf. Ahl bid'ah, they refer back to men and ideologies and philosophies and, uh, and, and other things, other sources, external sources to Islam often. So this becomes problematic. So Ahl sunnah, they cut the door. And those are just a few reasons why debating, the harms of debating and why we find that in books like this and other texts, classical texts, that Ahl Sunnah cut that they wanted to close the door because it's not to give a platform to Ahl Bid'ah, not to allow them to have the opportunity to spread their, their doubts, their shubahat to the general Muslims and uh, to, to weaken them in every point. A last point I do need to mention that also of why they made Hajar of people and why they, did the, they also uh, didn't debate Ahl Bid'ah is because they were afraid of their hearts becoming a uh, soft you know and 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 a, of accepting a person from ahl bidah so for example if you have someone from amongst your friends or someone who you become very close to and then you find out they have a lot of bidah not just they make a mistake but they have totally their hardcore takfiri is what it comes down to or they you know just really believe in the methodology of a Quran Muslimin or you know some other shubahat or something or they believe in the you know the ta'wil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, sifat or the ta'til you know they negate Allah as divine sifat then it becomes problem if this is your coffee mate and a real close friend of yours maybe even a relative that it becomes very difficult for you to view the issue or separate yourself from them and in turn you may become uh, you may weaken in your resolve and you may be accepting of bid'ah 
or you may embrace bid'ah, so they were fearful of themselves. And these are the major imams of the sunnah. They were fearful of themselves. So what about you and I? We should be fearful when we know someone has a deviant belief. And especially if they are a caller to that belief, then you do want to be very uh, distant from those individuals or that individual because they can infect your heart. It can cause you to love them. Look at how many people from Ahl al in the past and even present, we can think of so many examples. Someone says, starts talking about the Quran, the authenticity of the Quran or the Kira'at and stuff. And so many people rush to defend him. Even in that, they, they will never let him go because they love him. They love him. Sometimes it's a racial love. It's based on tribalism. Sometimes it's a love based on uh, just they, they, they benefited from this individual for years. But they can't let him go. And every mistake he makes, they will rush to defend it. That's problematic. It's very problematic, especially when it becomes very clear, when there are very serious errors. We're not saying, oh, people speculate so-and-so is sitting with Ahl bidah Well, even in that, you have uh, you have some leeway. You know, meaning there's the wabit. It's not like, oh, I saw him drinking coffee with him. He's a mubtadiya. La. We don't live in the time of Imam Baba Hari. And we have to contextualize those narrations. We have to know and understand. But when someone is openly leaving the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, they've abandoned points of the methodology of Ahl sunnah or they call into doubt the methodology of Ahl sunnah or they make tabdir or takfir of Ahl sunnah then this is uh, quite problematic to have, uh, to ally yourself, uh, to ally yourself with people like this, because there's no doubt that they're going to either affect you or take you away from the straight path. So this is why the Salaf were so vigilant about these issues of sitting with the people of desires and also listening to them, listening to their doubts, and going back to what we were talking about in the beginning is the issue of debating with them. So it's very, very important. Uh, I also don't want to oversimplify the issue as far as uh, a lot of these masail, but we're giving you the foundation principle because you don't start with all the exceptions. People will never understand and have anything. For example, if you study fiqh, you're not going to start studying all these kawaid fiqhiyah and then you haven't studied any in the nusus. Okay? You're not going to start studying the kawaid fariyah you know, those those subsidiary issues, and then you haven't even studied the usul, the, the foundation. Okay? So it's very important to know what the foundation principles of Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah are, and then work our and build ourselves from there. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Bless us with ikhlas, with the bad. Bless us to go forward in all of our positive endeavors and protect us from every form of evil. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم